<laughs> Arab. <laughs> he can be. Guys, how you doing? What's up? Hey. Uh, what should I call you, anti aliased Oh, uh, my name's Adam. If you want, I don't. I don't. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The real quick, Pisco. Can you turn your mic up like five thousand percent? Yeah. One oh, second. thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Um, hope that you're having a good afternoon. Um, happy to have people come on stream to like defend this opinion a little bit. I think it's important to have like difference of opinion. So first off, yep. I just want to you know thank you for for doing that and subjecting well, yourself you. to scrutiny. If that's yeah, cool. no problem. Awesome. I had a couple I, of things. I, that, I, yeah. Wait, let me just clarify. I want somebody to convince me uh, that there's a better option. I really do. <laughs> Cause, okay. Because I don't like it. That's my job. I just don't see a better option right now. So that's, that's where I'm. Job. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, I think actually a lot of some of the difficulties, though not all of them, relate to semantics. And so right. I, I think I'll start there. Um, with first, the first thing I disagree with you when I listened to it, which was about whether or not the evidentiary component of this opinion was a holding or was dicta. Yeah. Am I correct in saying that your position is that it is dicta? Yeah, because I can't find anything where there's an actual uh, prescriptive statement in that entire section C where he just verbal diarrheas for... Uh... However many be, paragraphs that was. So it, it, would it be fair to have like a definition of holding a like a or sorry, would you agree that something is a holding if the parties asked for the court to come to a determination about a particular legal issue and then the court comes to that decision uh, on that legal issue? That's a good question. Um, n not if the court did not. Because the court gets to choose which issues it's going to hear. Yeah, but if, if the like question that's is the whole pres if the question is presented, you believe the parties yes, have presented that you're the question to get to see the and the court and if the court acknowledges that as part of the question presented, then yes, I would agree. Okay, that would be part of the holding. Um, do you or do you not agree that this evidentiary question was literally briefed? It came up in oral arguments, and the parties literally asked the court to rule on it, and then they did. I, I would agree with all of that. I don't believe, though, that it is properly encompassed within the question presented. If you read it, it's, it, it takes some uh, straining of the language to consider an evidentiary me measure part of a question of immunity, which is the only thing they, uh, clear, they acknowledged the for the question, question presented. The so, question was briefed, though, right? I mean, they briefed it. They wanted the well, court yeah, to resolve but, it. But, well, you know if you've read enough opinions, they'll often be like, I, you know, um, sometimes they'll be like, I don't know why you bothered with this. This wasn't even part of the question. <laughs> and then other times they pick up on something that isn't part of the question and go on forever. And it's like, well, I don't. If the parties are saying that it's the question, that part of the question is this evidentiary thing, right? You agree yes. with that, that the parties are saying, hey, Part of this question is, can we use this as evidence? Oh, yeah. My only, my only uh, contention is that I don't know if the court as a whole agreed with that. Agreed to accept with, that as part that. of the question. Uh, oh, okay. How would because they the not question presented, the court also. states, doesn't have anything about evidence in it. If the court is asking questions about what the parties asked the court to determine. That is this evidentiary yeah. component, right? They literally are an oral argument asking questions. I'll read to you now um, a question from Samuel Lito. It's not the only one. Oh, no, I, I, I listened to it. I know, I know they did. Okay. And the, the parties briefed it, both in the yep. opposition brief and the reply brief. And yep. then the court has an entire section dedicated to the thing that the parties asked and the judges asked about in oral arguments. How is that not, by definition, the holding? Because it doesn't answer the question presented. Of that course would be it my does. Argument. Come on, man. I mean, they asked. Wait, wait. What? What was the question presented? The Let's question. Just make sure we're on the same. The page. question presented um, was the scope of immunity for a president, for a former president, um, for official acts. If you you can get to the specific one, if you just go. Yeah, I've I've got it right here. I was just. Um, I just had to pull it up. Uh, whether and if so, to what extent does a former president enjoy presidential immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct alleged to involve official acts during his tenure in office? So presidential immunity from criminal prosecution has nothing to do with what evidence can be admitted. 
who decides whether it has nothing to do with it? Okay, <laughs> that's that's why I said unless you torture the definition well, of no, no, immunity no, to include, <laughs> I don't believe generally immunity has anything to do with evidentiary questions. The part so first of all, the court could come to a. Uh, it could have the question presented be granted as something completely different, right? It could be um, the question presented some issue of civil procedure, and then they determine in their opinion, actually, we don't even have jurisdiction to hear this case, and so we're going to dismiss on subject matter jurisdiction. Yes. You recognize that, right? So yes, because so they would be holding. So, <laughs> holding so, then, so then you agree, therefore, yeah. that just because something is not in the – even assuming you're, that it's not encompassed by the, the terms, the scope of the immunity – you would agree that just because something isn't in the question presented doesn't mean it's not a holding. Fair? Uh, let's see. I just gave you as, 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 as a quick example I, for this, I'd be curious. Wasn't the Citizens yeah. United? Was that they made a really wide ruling on things that weren't necessarily before the court that changed like the structure? That is correct. Yeah. Yep. And that was obviously holding because like laws and shit and like how super PACs and everything came out of that court decision for something that wasn't directly before the court. So, so I guess I'll, I'll ask again. Isn't it the case that just because something isn't – the question isn't presented and the quote-unquote question presented that it could nonetheless be the holding of a court to address something that isn't encompassed by that question presented? Is that – that's a yes I or would, no? I, be, I believe – I would say only for um, standing issues or procedural issues. Where is where standing is that? technically is. Where are you coming up that only standing or jurisdictional because issues are... first – Okay, well, the way the Supreme Court has the authority to hear cases is any, you know, you know the language, case or controversy. Um, there has to be a genuine case or controversy, and then they have the choice of accepting it. You're just repeating the kind of jurisdictional limits of exactly. federal courts. But those, I'm asking those you things else. are built into the function of the court. You don't need to state them. It's sort of like... Um, uh, if I go to a restaurant, I don't need to order a plate. They're going to bring me a plate with the food on it, generally, I will assume. Um, I, so I they mean, don't need to I, state we, we, the we procedural construct... issues. You know that they're... there are cases that, that buck this trend, right? So, so if I could give you an example of it. Suppose yeah. that all that they were asking about here was whether or not like, um, the First Amendment protected some of the conduct here. And they didn't present the question of immunity. But the court right. on sua sponte came to a decision that this immunity doctrine exists. Would you agree that that decision would be holding? No. God, no. So even if the Supreme Court came to a decision entirely on some substantive matter of law that was not briefed, and it's controlling, and it's, it's absolutely the determining thing, they just wasn't presented um, by the parties, you would say that is not a holding of the court? Wait. It's the... I, almost definitionally, it seems like it can't be determinative of the issue if it wasn't the issue. So I'm confused what you mean. So th there can be a lot of legal issues that parties don't raise, forget to raise, are first thought about, you know, for the first time in oral argument and are never briefed that the court yep. ultimately determines, right? They granted uh, cert on a different question presented, but they're holding their determinations as to legal matters that are binding on the parties are absolutely still holdings. It's still controlling precedent. Agreed? Uh, yes, no? Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to understand. If, fuck, I wish there was an actual hypothetical so I could... Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'll give you a hypothetical. Give, okay, thank you. Because I'm trying to picture this ever happening in the real <laughs> Yeah. So, so okay. su suppose that the parties, for example, um, the question presented is, does... Uh, this is pre-Dobbs. Okay. Yeah, sure. Does Roe v. Wade, uh, oh, so, or sorry, does the Casey undue burden standard apply to a parent notification type law? Okay. And all yep. the parties do is they argue about whether or not it fits the Casey standard of undue burden, what, this law. Okay. Yep. And the courts don't brief whether you should overrule Roe v. Wade. And the court decides, even though it wasn't briefed, even though it wasn't argued, to overrule Roe v. Wade in that moment. Do you agree that that is a holding of the court in that hypothetical? Ooh, I don't. Uh, um, of course it is. Come on. That's an easy question. I, I well, I would disagree with the. I understand what you're saying, and it is an official act of the court. I don't know if it would count as a holding. Why would it not um, count as a holding? 
because a holding general, like it almost definitionally, the holding is the answer to the question presented. It's like, it's literally Where the are definition. you getting that definition of holding? Yeah, I was going to say, can, can we, or can I at least ask, maybe you guys can agree on this and move on to the next thing. Whatever definition of, the only definition of holding that matters is the Supreme Court justices that are making any particular decision. Because I think as we all, I think we've all agreed, we all have seen, mm. like, justices will cite to whatever the fuck part of a case they feel is relevant. And I've never seen somebody bring up, like, obviously nobody can question the Supreme Court about statutory construction, right? And nobody can question about matters of law, right? I've never seen another uh, justice say like, oh, well, you can't bring that up. That's dicta, not holding. You broke the rule. So at the end of the day, like, it feels like you have a very, very, very strict definition in mind, but like, that's not written down oh, anywhere, no, no. right? And, yeah, but where's where that from? Where's the definition yeah. that holding only means a response to the actual question presented um, um, by the parties? <laughs> well, I'm honestly, I'm taking this from like, uh, whatever, 15 years ago when I was in law school. Uh, so it wasn't like I was citing to something particular. Um, it's difficult to find a definition. The only one I've, it's not even a definition, it's a Wikipedia page. The holding is a court's determination of a matter of law based on the issue presented in the particular case. Yeah, if it's ba it's based on the issue but presented. But that is based it, on the issue, it, the question it's presented. Not, but it's not the issue presented, right? So it's separate from, it's, it came well, out. Well, no, but it has to answer presented. the issue. If it doesn't answer the issue, I don't think. It yeah, can but they can answer the it. issue and they can go much broader than that, right? They could they answer it very narrowly, but they could answer it very broadly for things that they might feel are incorporated in or that they want to incorporate in the ruling now. Well, they could do that. I just don't think that would be part of the holding. Well, would it be? It wouldn't be dicta, fair? Agree that it wouldn't I, be dicta. I would say it is. Well, what is you that? Can I ask? Or, or how, do you, how do you deal with Citizens United? Oh, um, I don't. I haven't read it in. A lot of years. When the hell did that come out? Uh, 2010. Yeah. That was my last year of law school. I honestly don't recall. Um, okay. So, like... Yeah, I, I, there are... Just to be clear, like, there were different issues that they granted cert on in Citizens United. And different things, like, came up in the briefing afterwards. Right. And people talked about different things. But, it like... Now, what you're saying or what you seem to be suggesting is even if it's included in the briefing, even if everyone's talking about it prior to the decision in oral arguments, unless the court literally writes it as part of its question presented in like the introduction section, it's not the holding. Well, even though it, it is in terms it, it of the depends. Practice. If it's, I would say, if it's necessary to answer the question presented, let me give a hypo and let me see if, if you disagree. And if so, maybe. Maybe you can explain to me where I'm wrong. Um, so let's say the question presented is, uh, does blah, blah, blah law require that all cars be red? And the court rules, yes, all cars must be red. Also, we think cars should be green. Now, is that part of the holding? No. Not really. It doesn't have anything to do with answering the question that actually was before the court. No, yeah, but wait, wait, what if they, what if they, just throw it? It's not binding on the parties. It's not, it's not a determination of law that, that, uh, but it is it binding on lower courts case. so that a lower court that hears a future case has no, I'm, to. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm trying to analyze why that would be dicta and not a holding. Oh, okay. Because yeah, yeah. That, that determination is just uh, an utterance that has no connection to A, anything the parties are arguing about, and there is no force of law. There is no binding effect on any of the parties. Okay. In the case. Um, let me let me change the hypo up to to I, I can see where where that. Oh wait, can't, wait, wait, hold on. Can I throw just okay. as, uh, that same hypo? Yeah, I'm curious. Sure. So they they say uh, somebody comes and they say that hey, um, should all cars be red or whatever? And the Supreme Court decides like all cars definitely should be red. That is the law. All cars should be red. But then they also say, and if a car is anything, also because you know if a car is anything, a car is a vehicle with four wheels. Would that be part of the holding, or is that just dicta? If it was necessary in the course of coming to the determination, right? Like if they they had to, let's say that they had like a jurisdictional thing or they had um they had to determine step yeah, one. But if it's, is this, if it's, is this <laughs> even a car? Let's say part, part of the analysis yeah. is, so the question presented is something like, did he violate the statute? And the statute says all cars must be read. And the court says, first of all, we need to determine whether this is a car. And yes. a car is we define as da -da -da -da, ba -da -ba -ba. this fits the definition, therefore a car. Secondly, we believe that the proper interpretation of this law is that they must be read. Got it? So there can be subsidiary questions that arise. You know, everyone thinks that the whole thing's going to be about the color of the, of the car, but maybe the court comes to some conclusion that a car is 
something much broader and much more narrow, and that's all they decide on the case, even though the question presented kind of implies or points in the direction of the color being yeah. the most important yeah. part. Yeah, but that car determination, yep. that would be part of the holding, right? That would be a holding, 100%. Because it would be necessary to resolve the case. But then my question would be then, because now I'm obviously I'm applying this now to the um, to the immunity question about evidence, yeah. right, where they say, well, this is what absolute immunity is, and if we're, I mean, it would obviously threaten absolute immunity if we could question these things as a matter of evidence. How is that not similar to the, like, well, if a car is anything, it's obviously it's a vehicle with four wheels. We need to know what a car is in order to say, you know, what color it should be. How is it not the same as, well, if we're granting immunity to this, we need to know what would threaten that immunity. How is it, how does that not carry over as like holding? It's actually worse than that. It, it, it's worse than that because you do need to resolve this to solve the case because yeah. the parties are asking for it to be resolved, right? The court, the, the, the and Roberts does resolve it. He brings up this exact, yes. and he resolves it. <laughs> so yeah, the, yeah. The, the prosecutor literally says, if you do grant that there's absolute immunity, at the very minimum, you should also grant this because that's the other theory that we have, that, th that we need this for the conspiracy as part of the intent. And so the parties are both asking them to resolve it, and the court does. And so it's necessary to the decision. Otherwise, the case is going to come back up because the prosecution is going to pr proceed on that theory. What the court is saying, no, 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 we're holding that this theory is invalid. And the, the question that you asked us about whether you could proceed on this theory of including those official acts is invalid. And so it absolutely is necessary to resolve the case before the court. It's a holding. I, That's why I Amy just, Coney Barrett calls it a holding. I disagree with it being necessary to resolve the issue before the court. Lots of things are necessary to resolve the entire case that the Supreme Court has no power to rule on. But, but the entire case before them, the issue before them, is the scope of this immunity. What's included yes. in it, what's not, what, Wait, you know, to, to what, but, what it extends and what it, what it doesn't extend. And what they're saying is this immunity extends both as to substantive liability and as to act evidence uh, for which other unofficial crimes could be, um, could be proved. And so they are elaborate in saying this immunity extends both to the underlying act and uh, to be used as evidence in further in uh, any other prosecution. That is necessary to resolve the case, to decide what this immunity means, the scope of it. It's completely within the I question would, presented. I would agree if I thought that evidentiary admission rules had anything to do with immunity, which you can argue, but that seems like a stretch of the definition of immunity. It does. In really which case, does. could theoretically, could the court say, you know, and as part of the immunity... Uh, uh, Donald Trump's wife needs to give him a blowjob every day. Like, they could define immunity that way. I would still say that's dicta because it has nothing to do with the actual issue of immunity. Yeah, I mean, I don't... Uh, first of all, I, I guess we're getting to the question of who decides what is related to immunity. And yeah. in, in that case, you could make a, a case that something that's so bizarre, so out there, so disconnected from the nature of the question being asked should be considered dicta. I, I hear you on that, but this, that's not what this is. Even if you if I were to grant that sort of See, card, I I would I would say evidentiary is. issues are so different than immunity from prosecution. No, that no those no. are wait wait so wait wait. The what's so separate? <laughs> evidentiary stuff? No no no. Evidentiary they're, admission they're rules about... versus. Well, you wait, wait. Uh, you just to be clear. Well, hold on. You say they're so different. Immunity. You say they're so different. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Doesn't Jack Smith say in his argument? Doesn't he literally say that? Hey, these issues that you're having with immunity, these can all be brought up on an evidentiary basis. And Roberts speaks directly to that and says, No, it wouldn't be good to do this in an evidentiary way. That's why we have to grant this immunity here. Like he compares these two things and says why the evidentiary rules wouldn't be enough. No. Well, yeah. I, obviously, he's got to answer what the um, what the parties asked him to do. Well, it would have been. Uh, uh, what Trump's lawyers brought up in their brief. No, 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 no. Why are you just guessing? Well, the Supreme Court didn't it raise that issue in the No, but I think this came from... The, correct, the yes. It was a quote. brought this up, yeah. and then the, the, um, Trump responded to it. And then Trump, in oral argument, is talking to Samuel Alito, and Samuel Alito's like, we would have to resolve this in order to... I mean, this is... Wait, th this is the, the question and answer. I'll just give you the question and answer. Sam Alito, when you say the acts should be expunged from the indictment, right? He's asking for the acts to be expunged. You agree that that's what he's asking for? Trump is asking for that? Yeah, obviously. That in and itself would not achieve very much unless evidence of those official acts were precluded at trial. So is that what you're saying? That the prosecution should not be permitted at trial to prove the official acts as part of the conspiracies that are alleged? Answer. Absolutely. And we think that's just clear implication of Brewster and Johnson and their discussion of this in a very an uh, analogous context. That is them squarely presenting the issue of whether or not 
um, what the parties are asking for, namely Trump is asking for an expungement of these acts to what that extends. And that extends both to their, subs- their, their purpose for substantive liability and evidence. Right. I don't know. I, I, this is all a nothing <laughs> point, but I, I mean, if, okay. if you're going to disagree on that, then I guess I, I'll leave it to the judgment of the audience to see like, wh- yeah, whether they think it's a, yeah. it's a holding. Yeah. Okay. All right. On to the actual meat. Oh, okay. You yeah. agree with this opinion, right? <laughs> At least somewhat. I would agree with... Okay, let me tell you exactly what I told uh, Destiny mm-hmm. or Stephen so that I uh, don't... I agree with the holding as I read it, which is, if I can scroll down far enough, the president is absolutely immune from criminal prosecution for conduct within his exclusive sphere of constitutional authority. He has a presumptive immunity from criminal prosecution for acts within the outer perimeter of his official responsibility. And for unofficial acts, he has no immunity. Got I it. would, I believe that that is, if not the best, it is a fair uh, or reasonable statement. Got it. A reasonable I, ruling. I heard you say before that one example of a core official duty would be the president ordering the assassination of someone. Is that true? I, I believe that that's a, I don't think there's anyone, well, there are people under him that might do that, but I'm, by definition then, it is a core duty. Okay. For the president to order the assassination of a person? Yes. Okay. So you agree that if the president ordered an assassination of a political rival in America, that he would be absolutely immune for any- I think he probably uh, would be, yes. Okay. So that's, just to be clear to everyone watching- that is I don't like it. <laughs> support the opinion. I really hate it, but I don't see a way around fighting it. Fighting the SEAL Team 6 hypotheticals and saying that, yes, Stephen and I are absolutely correct. That Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely all the Republican for... idiots that are saying, no, that's not at all, <laughs> obviously. Okay. My, and, and the reason why you think it's the best is because I, you think it's necessary? I can't think of a better way to... Because I... I don't know if you heard this part. I, I believe there's the president needs criminal immunity to some extent or for his for any action that is within the proper scope of the office of the presidency, he needs to be criminally immune. And your comparison to that is police officers immunity? It's it's just the easiest one for most people to grasp. So I, yeah, I've I agree. been using that in discussions because it's easy to Everybody understands that when a cop arrests you, he's committing battery, at least in some states, or would be if he wasn't immune from being charged with battery for every time you arrest somebody. Yeah, I mean, I guess we're just now disagreeing on what immunity means. I mean, you're saying that yeah. cops have criminal immunity? For, for, for official their official acts, acts or their... Um, Core official acts? How it- <laughs> well, it, it doesn't map on because core official relates to con- you know. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, authority. I'm, I'm, that's why I'm trying. This is yeah. one of the problems is doesn't- trying to make the comparison to police is the the entire opinion is structured as being unique to the president because of his yeah, which I constitutional well, role. I disagree with that. I think well, I think you probably have heard that I can't defend the way they justified it. I, I can, mean, you could, I you could, defend the rule you could make itself. it, you, I can't it. <laughs> you could make it map on if we say like, is the core function of a police officer to file a police report? Well, if we say that like a state legislator could file a police report, like that but, wouldn't but, be correct, right. but yeah. But well, why, yeah. why don't we try to do that? I understand yeah. immunity to be different than a defense. And this is what Stephen was bringing up. And I think maybe it wasn't, there was some disconnect there. A defense would be something like justification, right? I, uh, it would be a defense for, for example, Right. And by the way, murder is not malice and murder is not intent to kill. Just to be clear to everyone, malice is, is broader than that. It includes yeah. intent to seriously wound. It includes yeah. reckless disregard for human life. So all that stuff is yeah. um, just, just to be hundred percent clear. But oh yeah, well I just simplified it to that because um, he thought it meant minute. more than uh, that. You needed more than just an intent to kill. Okay, so that so, was yeah. <laughs> a defense to a police shooting in a criminal context would be something like. I was justified in shooting. Yes. That's not immunity, right? No. And, well, let's – that. but that's um, uh, an Until extraordinary – you, Do you believe that it, that is or that is not immunity? I don't believe that shooting someone is ever a core duty of a police officer. I'm sorry. I, I, I'll just um, – I'll ask one more time. Do you think that the defense of justification for a cop who shoots someone is immunity or is not No, immunity? no. God, no. 
not immunity. No. So cops but I, don't I have also immunity. wouldn't. I, I that wasn't what I was talking about for immunity. So, so does anyone else in the country have criminal immunity? Or sorry, I'll just ask the more narrow. Do cops Wait, have any criminal? I, immunity I already gave their... an example of cops having criminal immunity. Can you give it again? Yeah. If you look at the Florida, I use this just because that's where uh, Stephen is, the Florida criminal law on battery, mm -hmm. every time a police officer arrests an uncooperative subject, not excessive force or anything, that is, that meets the elements of battery. Agreed. In the state of Florida. I now, do you, now, I think Stephen was arguing that Every police officer could technically be arrested for battery. 100%. And right. I don't believe that any uh, police officer would join the force if just for doing, doing their job, they could be arrested. But they, they have been arrested. Just as a quick, hold on, because I, I, hold on, wait, 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 when you say could, it sounds like you're saying could as in like, if a new DA came in, he could press charges or lay charges on every single police officer. That's not what I mean when I say could be. What I mean could is that it's always a possibility. There isn't a presumed yeah. immunity okay. there. It's like it could happen. They could, if, he, if they break the rules I, or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Just I mean, could as in this legally is a crime, whether it is, whether they choose to prosecute it or not, the police officer will admit to every element of the crime. Yeah, but he'll raise That's the That's what I mean by it. he'll raise the defense of justification. Yeah. No, wait, to an arrest? What's the just <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm confused. Well, yeah. he would never There's he would no never be of, Hold on, he would wait, never wait. he would never be arrested. Wait, can you show me the defense in Florida law that of, ju of justification? Yeah, for battery. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. so, so number 1 <clears throat> I'm sure in the authorizing statute, I don't know Florida specifically, of police that they are given <clears throat> explicit permission to apprehend suspects. Okay. Okay. So the argument would be in a charge for battery is that the law gives cover just like self-defense, right? In self-defense, I would have a defense of justification to a battery charge. Yeah. Let's say that I intended to hit someone, strike someone, or do some kind of offensive touching to a person, but I did so because that person was trying to steal my goods, but the law makes a carve out. If the law says you're allowed to use force in response to um, you know, threats to, let's say, that your, your, uh, your property or to your person. So that would be not an immunity, right? Self-defense or the authorization of public use of force or something isn't an immunity. Well, just because it's you're authorized to do something doesn't mean necessarily that that shields you from prosecution for another well, crime. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that is absolutely correct, right? Just okay. because you, <laughs> just, wait, wait, wait. Just because you have um, authorization to, to engage and arrest suspects for some reasons under some standards doesn't mean that you won't be liable if you go beyond what's allowed in the authorizing statute or regulation or whatever it is. And that's what we want, right? If cops, for, and, and the best example of that is Chauvin. Chauvin at trial, he did not claim to be immune. His defense, he had two defenses basically. I mean, he had a couple others, but the, the main ones were causation, that George Floyd didn't die at my hand. He died because of fentanyl. And two, justification, that I was taught to do this technique, that I'm allowed to do things within the scope of my duties, and there was the jury determined that he was not justified. The jury determined he was not justified. You agree that the jury determined he was not justified? Yeah. I, okay. Well, I don't, like I said, I don't think that's a core duty of a, um, yeah. Wait, what's not a core duty of a police then officer? It, then it's not immune <laughs> under any definition. Yeah, I, well, I didn't disagree with that. Okay, I, so, so do cops have any immunity? is a core duty of uh, do, the police. Do cops and, have any criminal immunity? Like I just said, I think they do. But, but you, you're saying that, you... Th we just went to that whole hypothetical where I told you that it would be a defense. And I don't think... That, did you disagree that it would be defense? Yeah, I, I said uh, if you can send me a court case or a statute that exempts or... Um, I can just show you the Chauvin case. Oh, wait, Chauvin oh, case. No, even, we're, wait, wait, wait. Even what you're saying here, you said cops have core immunity to arrest somebody. Let's say that I'm walking on the street and a cop sees me and he's like, are you destiny? And I'm like, yeah. And the cop's like, I watched your fucking videos on Trump. I hate you, you fucking piece of shit. And then he walks up and he just like, he handcuffs me and like throws me to the ground. Do you think that's an unquestionable action? Does he have core, because that's what core immunity, that's, that's what core, immunity means. Right? He's, he is a police officer. He can arrest me, right? 
Yes, when he's acting with his, within his core duties. But of course, I, he's not. That, that doesn't the, happen. Wait, wait, no, wait, 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 wait. The big, wait. Oh, last, I'm sorry, I'll never interject. Hold on, wait, 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 wait. But what you just said there, that is everything. What you, what you just said there is when he's acting within his core duties, who determines that? Right. And I think, well, the court. Well, but, but for the president, they can't. Yeah, they can. That, wait, that is, that is also, that's in the back and forth right there. The, the, um, yeah. The, the, sorry. The, the court has to make the you're, initial you're determination defining. of whether it is uh, core, the, uh, within the core sphere of. Uh, the yeah. court determines on a power by power basis. It doesn't determine in the individual case, right? The court determines, hey, pardoning, that's core. Anything related to pardon, that's absolutely immune. They're not going to go in and look into whether or not the motivation of your pardon was bad. Just like you just gave the example of the assassination. It, you just said, right, the president could maliciously, in bad faith, yes. assassinate anyone in the country. And they, no amount of facts could make him liable for that assassination. Exactly. Or even in the arrest example, the court, the, you know, I could say, I want to sue this guy or whatever. This is bullshit. Or the crim a criminal prosecutor bring it up. And they go, okay, well, here's what he said. And the court would go, wait, 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 wait. I don't care what the fuck he said. What did he do? He arrested him? Oh, that's a core power. Hold on. Well, he said, I don't care what he said. It's a core power. He arrested him. That's it. It's over. Okay. Let me clarify. I thought it went without saying that the core power is to arrest people within the law. That's the, ah, that's <laughs> the oh, okay. But yeah, that, can't do that. Well, no, because that is their function as law enforcement is to enforce the law. But the, but the court, that, then you're not doing your in job. Pre -trial, wait, wait, in pre-trial, in pre-trial, the judge can't make that determination. Of fact, that's something you would have to fight about in front of a judge or jury, right? Uh, well, not, I don't, I, I don't know about the jury. I think the judge could make that determination. Mm. Regardless, the, the court in the Trump case, no one is alleging that what he did was legal. We're all saying it's illegal. You, you agree, right? The president doesn't have a core power well, to the, like send fake letters to DOJ and, and try to steal the election. The problem is that's, that's not his position. What do you mean? That's not his position. That's, his position that's is he's trying to ensure a full and fair election where everybody's voice yeah, is heard. And the cop's and position is that I, I did follow the law and that my I'm saying you can't you can't assume that he's guilty. You you can't likewise, assume he's innocent and, either, but you can't assume he's guilty wait, for likewise, the sake of the uh, likewise. Of the, you cannot you cannot assume that the the cop who does something clearly outside outside the bounds of the arrest procedures that that person is guilty. That's what Stephen just told you. And I think it's yeah. I, I, I didn't disagree. But you said that the scope of the immunity would only apply to what's legal. That doesn't even make sense, right? The, the immunity is for illegal things. It, it would be totally obviated. It would be no, eviscerated. <laughs> that's, that's, that's Roberts's point in, in Section C that we looked at is it would eviscerate it if, if all it came down to was to ground out like um, what's legal and what's illegal, then the immunity means nothing. We just have to have a trial about what's legal and what's illegal. And if it's illegal, it was never inside the immunity doctrine anyway. And so he's guilty. If you understand that that's what the point is. Yeah. So then it can't be I, that immunity only covers legal things. No, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm saying when we are defining what the core, uh, core functions of any office are, they're set forth in the law. So that's what I'm talking about legal as far as the law that sets out what the officer is supposed to do. Yeah, and the, and the law sets or out... Or regulations, officer, depending on, you know, how far down you get. The law sets out that they're supposed to apprehend suspects and to arrest no. people who break the law. Mm, okay. <laughs> you don't agree with that? Um, apprehend suspects. Well, to be very clear, uh, right, there's well, legal standards that have to be met to arrest somebody. You can't arrest... You have to have... Yeah, that's what I was trying to... I'm like, that's not exactly... It's a little too simplistic. No, but, yeah, but I, it gets the point across. You I can't arrest somebody at random. You can detain them if you have a reasonable suspicion of a crime, and then you yes. can arrest them if you have probable cause for a crime. And if neither of those standards are met, you can't even yes. detain a person. They can just walk, right? Yes. So then it is the case that there... That it is a core duty of, or whatever you want to call it, if you want to have the analog to the Trump case, it's a core duty of police to arrest people, 100%. And within, the, within, within the yeah. standards, right? Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I didn't think I had to say that before, but then you hit me on it as though I, yeah. But if, 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 if that's the analysis is you can do your core duty so long as it's legal and within standards, then you disagree with this case. 
I, this, no, I disagree with Robert's say, ruling or no, Robert's no, 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 because this case doesn't say, oh, you can direct the DOJ within standards. Remember, the DOJ, the, there's also standards for starting investigations and, uh, you know, starting lawsuits, indicting people. There are also standards related to that. There are other constitutional violations alleged of Trump in those communications in the, in the conspiracy. And so you can't say that the scope of the immunity is dictated by what's within legal standards. The scope of the immunity in the Trump case is dictated by the powers used. Yes. Not by whether or not the use of those powers were legal, illegal, or met standards. Yes. I, I, no, I agree with that. So then the scope, if I gave the other impression, I'm sorry. <laughs> if, if you're making an analog to the cop case, then the scope of the immunity. In the yeah, I've already said it's not a perfect analog. I just used it because it was simple to explain to people who said, no, no, no one ever needs immunity. I'm like, no. Well, but on, here's the thing. Well, but here's the thing. We keep saying it's not a perfect analog, but I think the argument is that it's not an analog at all. No cop, yep. even when performing his core function, That's is good. ever, yeah, immune. These are defenses that could be raised Wait. At, at a trial. Yeah. Okay. So I think I asked this of you, Pisco. So yeah. do you think that any cop could, like, they have violated the law. They could be found guilty, every single cop. Sorry, no. So violating the law. Okay, because Stephen said wait, that was. No, you're misunderstanding the, again. You're misunderstanding. You're misunderstanding. So wait, wait you, you said I, I mean during our previous conversation, you said that you may have changed. No, 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 no. Wait, hold on. Wait, like, I, hold on. I'm, no, 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 no. Stop. Hold on. I want to clarify this word one more time. When I say okay. could be, I don't mean that like. If no fact changes, a DA could come in and then retroactively charge every cop and currently sure. When I say could be, I just mean it's possible that in the course of their duty, any cop could be charged with a crime if they are breaking the law. That's what I mean when I say could be. Not like well, anybody could at any point in time and it's like a fucking lottery if the DA does it or not. I'm saying that they, it's possible. It's a potentiality that they could be charged with a crime. That's what I mean. Right, but I'm That's saying I'm saying every single cop is violating the law no, exactly. no no they're not no because because uh, it would be like saying everyone who uses self-defense is violating the law that's just well not then true. show me the self-defense thing for allowing battery by a cop i don't understand so why if, if i were able to show you a statute that showed that police were able to battery or, or to use battery to use force or to what would constitute battery why would i need to show you a statute of that because otherwise, all I've got is the battery statute that says they're guilty, and you've offered no defense whatsoever. And you you're saying they're it. immune from prosecution, so they've no defense and not immune. I want something that says they are. Do you or deny that cops have a justification defense when killing people? I, we're not talking about killing. Like I said, battery. The law, and I can pull it up and is, send is it to you reason, again. Is, is, there, is there a reason you don't want to do killing? I will go to battery, but is there a reason you don't want to do killing? Because I, we can both agree that arresting uncooperative subjects is a core duty of the police. So it's shooting it and killing is, people, right? No. It's not a core duty of cops to shoot and kill suspects who are you know, serious threats to life or bodily injury to themselves or others. Well, no. Now we're getting to anybody can shoot and kill somebody who's a threat to them. That's I, that we don't need to be a cop for. Yeah, so that that's has not nothing a, to do. That's, that's why I'm not, trying to separate it to immunity. something that only that's, cops can do. That's a, that's a defense, right? An, the, an analogy to. But it has nothing to do with them being a cop as well. Yeah, you can also battery people, who who are. But what's your dislike? <laughs> or threats to? But they're threats not threats. You. The cop is just arresting them. They're not threatening. I, I understand we, the cop we, has a greater. Okay, scope. So we, Wait, wait, I understand the cop has a greater scope of justification than regular people. That's true. But what I'm telling you is when they use their force, that is not unquestionable. And they absolutely could be indicted and go to jail if they yes, use I'm, I'm, force. I'm saying when they are performing the normal functions of their job and are arresting uncooperative subjects, what prevents them from being prosecuted? Hold on. Am I, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. My, would the assumption not be, and we, I can start looking for this, okay? I, my guess is going to be that every single state has a state constitution. There might be, maybe Louisiana doesn't fuck it, but more or less, they all have state constitutions. They all have state legislatures, and the legislatures have probably created laws, or in the constitution, there's some carve out for creating a law enforcement body that has specific things delegated to it. No? But the president has powers too. That Now we're getting to exactly Roberts's point. Well, the president's been given these powers, he can use them however he wants. That's, that's not, not in the, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. That's, that's not, not in the Constitution. That's, that is not in the Constitution, though. The president is given authority to uh, command the armed forces in the Constitution. If he commands them to kill his rivals, that's 
you're saying, I'm saying the fact that he has the power delegated to him does not give him the power to violate laws. I thought that would be your position. <laughs> so look, okay, so here's, um, I don't even know where the fuck to link this, okay? Florida Statute 776.05, okay? Law enforcement officers use of force in making an arrest. Law enforcement officer or any person whom the officer has summoned or directed to assist him or her need not retreat or desist, desist from efforts to make a lawful arrest because of resistance or threatened resistance to the arrest. The officer is justified in the use of any force, and then they list three different circumstances. So this would be like, this is a statute that's outlining, oh, look, a police officer is allowed to do this particular action, and obviously, Obviously, we're not going to arrest him for following a literal statute from the legislature and then a job for the, from the executive, right? But he could be indicted and prosecuted if he doesn't fulfill that standard. Therefore, it's yes. not immunity. It's a defense. Yeah. It's a defense of justification. Agreed, yes or no? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not sure where it was linked or sent. So Here, hold on. I'm so sorry. I'll, let me, I'll, I'll message this to <laughs> you, to... <laughs> and I'm going to message it to Pisco as well. Yeah, you guys can. Here you go. Hop okay, through this if you want. But... Okay, thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, I know I'm a human, I swear. Okay. Let me know when you're good to go. Yeah. I've got it pulled up just so you know. Yeah. I was just looking through it. <laughs> it says the officer justified in the use of, quote, any force under the following things, right? Reasonably yes. necessary to defend himself, to arrest felons, to retake um, felons who've escaped. Shit. Those are all uh, justification. Nothing. Um, okay. I would argue, and I can't tell because uh, this is not like Lexus or Westlaw. It doesn't say when this was passed. Why does it matter? I would say that even before this was passed, because it obviously was passed as a law at some point, the police still were immune. They're not immune. This is not immunity. Fair? Do you agree this is not immunity? This is not immunity. I am arguing, you agree that this law was passed at some point, right? I agree this law was passed at some point. You agree that battery was a crime before there was any law in I the assume, United States I assume passed. it was. I assume it was. Okay. Do you think that police officers could have been charged before there was this no, I think, you, I think it could have been a common law defense. I don't think that... I, it wasn't. I, if you wait, want, I can I cite think, you the case. I, wait, I, <laughs> because I don't think Sotomayor that. cited it. I, I don't think that statutes are the only source of justifications. There okay. could be some constitutional or common law defense to, cr to crimes. I'm not claiming, and I want to be very clear in saying, that okay. statutes are the only source of common law or, or, or sorry, of, of defenses that exist. That's not the case. Okay? Okay. So if you heard me to say that, I categorically have just refuted that. It doesn't okay. matter. The point is, the law as it exists right now, and I challenge you to find any example in the past where it's been the case okay. that this constitutes immunity as opposed okay. to a defense. It, it depends on how you define immunity. This is the case that Sotomayor cited, which was uh, uh, Nardone. It was a case regarding mm -hmm. wiretapping. I don't know if you're familiar with it. I wasn't before I saw it in her uh, dissent. Yeah, tell me about it. Okay. What do you think your, the conclusion is? The, the Nardone did find, the, ironically... <laughs> which doesn't make sense and goes against everything that makes any sense, that police officers who were uh, who had a wiretap could not testify about it in court because wiretapping was illegal under the Communications Act of, uh, oh, when was it, 19, uh, 1920-something? Why are you I talking about remember. evidence stuff about testifying? Because... I thought you said that wasn't they had, at all. The matter. evidence couldn't come in because it was illegal to. Um, you you said that evidence stuff isn't matter for immunity. So, uh, yeah, I'm saying the case is about evidence, but. Well, I think it didn't re it didn't matter. It's, it's irrelevant. So, are you going to take that back, or are you going to say that it is relevant? Well, and also not to go down, hey, but you're saying that I'm, that that, that particular thing it's that dicta. <laughs> oh, never mind. It, I would I would not disagree that it's dicta. The point is, this was a case of first impression. All we've got is dicta. So obviously I'm going to be relying on dicta. <laughs> that's not even, that's, yeah, obviously. You think Nardone um, was dicta? Or I what, believe what's your, what's your that Nardone, Nardone, when Nardone said that where public officers are impliedly excluded from language, embracing all persons, uh -huh. I think that had nothing to, that was, yes, that part is dicta. Okay, but, the but, part but where that, they, that's a statutory construction argument again, right? So that, that is not immunity. What they're saying is, 
in that context, we are going to read these general criminal laws yes. uh, so as not to apply to these people um, right. in general, right? Yes. Uh, well, that's, that's what that's, I was saying is you might not call it immunity, but if you... It's not immunity because if... Wait, if, but can I finish the sentence? Yeah. Okay. You might not call it immunity, but functionally, if you say that every law that has to affect the president has to use the words the president, that is functionally immunity. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> if the president no, can't be charged with any general purpose crime, I would call that immunity. So, that, first of all, you understand that's not the holding of, the, of this court. The court isn't making a statutory construction argument. That would have been a better argument. I think that, that's an argument maybe even I could accept. I, I wouldn't, but it's, it's more <laughs> acceptable. All, all it would be saying is I'll, that you need to... Wait, wait, wait. I, I want to finish this. Okay. All you would be saying is you need a clear statement from Congress before any of these laws can apply to, a, a, I guess, a former president um, with respect to their duties taken in office. That's, yeah. that's saying that he is not constitutionally immune, but we're really, it's, it's almost like, um, it's almost like a Chevron style thing yeah. that we're going to, we're going to read into Congress's laws, an exclusion of the president. That's not what the court is saying here. The court is yeah. saying, even if Congress wanted to make this criminal of the president, they couldn't do it. Right. So it's completely Fair different. That is, that is a good, a good, that, um, that's why Sotomayor uh, is distinction. citing it. <laughs> Sotomayor yeah. is citing it because it's, he, she's saying this is aberrant. This is different. Uh, you know, we're talking right now about immunity, which has yeah. never been recognized in any other context. What it should be is a defense, a, a public um, interest defense or, or some kind of explicit statute like, like Stephen just showed you, which is a justification defense. This is also kind of what I was saying when I felt like the the jury or I'm sorry, the judicial was snatching power from the legislature and the president because the the Congress could theoretically with this ruling, Congress could pass a law saying we are going to pass a law and we're going to amend the D.C. murder statute or something. I don't know if Congress passed that, but we're going to amend the D.C. Yeah. murder statute, the federal murder statute and say every single person, even the president of the United States could be charged with murder. Congress could pass that law. OK, it could be implemented. The federal code could be updated and then the president could go out and murder somebody and then an FBI agent could arrest the president. Right. So the executive branch has arrested the president, enforcing a law from the legislature. And then the court could say, I'm sorry, you're neither of you allowed to do that. And now he walks. Yeah. But see, I would agree with that. So. <laughs> so then why are you citing Nardone? Nardone isn't. No, I'm citing. Uh, wait, I was citing Nardone because we were talking about um, whether the. Uh, justification statute mattered. I was merely pointing out that there, um, I don't know. There's yeah, not a good way to describe <laughs> reading, <laughs> reading the, uh, matter. government out of a, reading a person out of the word person. Can, can I just, there's uh, not a good term for that. Um, it's it, yeah. It's statutory construction. It's a rule of statutory. Well, construction. Yeah. But I'm saying for that specific idea that, uh, uh, an official is not, a it's government a official is not a person under a statute. You, you I, say it's, not it's, a, it's a presumption. And, and uh, the, I mean, I don't even think we agree on the basis. Like, yeah. do you agree that a justification defense is not criminal immunity? No, I agree with that. You agree that it's not fair? Yes. Do you agree that cops only have justification defenses and or kind of like these ex statutory exclusions, which are also not immunity, fair? That's fair, yes. Okay, so then it is true to say, isn't it, no one else has criminal immunity like the president. And that's why no one cited yeah. any yes. example of that. And you don't yes. need it, right? That's why I don't understand why you, why you like the holding, as you define okay. it. Okay, so let me, let me continue on because Nardone got its ruling by citing Balthazar versus Pacific Electric Railroad Company, mm -hmm. a case out of California. It must be conceded that the language of the Motor Vehicle Act in fixing speed limits and regulating the use of public streets is broad enough to apply to a motor fire truck responding to a fire alarm. But a familiar and fundamental rule of construction requires yeah. that this general language shall not be construed to apply to the government or its agencies unless expre expressly included by name. The general rule is stated by Blackstone as follows. I shall only further remark that the king is not bound by any act of parliament unless he is be named therein by special and particular words. The most general words that can be devised 
affect him not the least. Um, yeah, that's that, that's exactly what we're talking about here. So yes, it, and so I would, I would agree. T- I believe. <laughs> okay, how to phrase this? I think the judges would never say this. Uh, if it's I don't not, believe if, it would be politically. I can't, I can't address it. If, if you're just doing some um, fan fiction about what they should have said or could have said, I can only. No, I'm. I'm, that I'm, I'm, I'm saying I don't think that. The idea of sovereign immunity, actual sovereign immunity, mm-hmm. is not a popular concept in the American legal theater, so to speak. Of course, yeah. Okay, so I'm saying they could have gone with this rule that relies, goes way back to Blackstone and sovereign immunity. I don't think they would have done it, though. That's why they, I think they, they went did do with, it. No, they did not cite Blackstone and sovereign immunity. This is literally and, not that I saw it anyway. Wait. Did they? So this entire thing, the the basis of the opinion um, is structured around the notion that a person who wields the power of the, of the presidency cannot be questioned when they exercise official powers. Yes. Oh, no, I agree. I think they should have cited this or I would honestly, if they were being honest, they should have cited this. But that's king power. That's, that's the king. That's the power of the king. Right. And well, and when the president is functioning as the executive within that role, I, I think that govern, uh, that, that he is the king. That sounds like what you want to say. (laughs) No, I I think as far as that, the president should have some form of immunity, whether you want to call it sovereign immunity or governmental immunity or then I, I feel like the question then would be that, like, what can we think of a single act where the president would need this immunity, where he's ever needed this immunity to protect him while doing his job? Well, the only way I can see that he wouldn't need that is if we agree that no general purpose law applies to him. No, we don't need to agree to that. I mean, okay, then, then why he- is... why? isn't every president guilty of murder. Because that's his job. Not, it's outlined wait, in specific, con- constitutionally and, and statutorily. Wait, wait. I'll, I'll respond directly. Why is he okay. not guilty of murder, right? So, so the president, Lincoln, for example, ordered the killing of American citizens on American ground. Fair? He, he Fair. Was, he's ordering yep. people to kill people. Obama drone strike drone yep. an American citizen on foreign ground. People order killings all the time, which would otherwise yep. be illegal. It's justified. It's a justification offense that the president in exercising his authorities as commander in chief can kill people who engage in war um, against the United States. That is a justification defense. However, it's not immunity. So if we found out, for example, this is the example I always use. Let's say that Mitt Romney is on a trip to Yemen. He's on a trip to Yemen. He's in 2012 and Obama knows that Mitt Romney is not engaging in war against the United States. In bad faith, he says to his um, Secretary of Defense, he says, hey, I just want to kill Romney. That'll make the election so much easier. He says that to him and says, and that's the reason why I want you to go and kill Mitt Romney, because I want to eventually just kill my rivals and take over and become the king. That's what he says. And he fires a drone strike as Mitt Romney's plane is landing and he's waving to to the Yemen people and he kills him. Do you think that that action, you, I think you've already said, that action is something that the president would be criminally immune for? Yeah. Under this theory. Okay. Yeah. I, I, the I, better I, answer is... I don't like the, it, but I... The better answer is that's a justification offense. And if a prosecutor okay. got facts about the president, and a former president, yeah. and they said so can, they would have to prove... This is, this is the only part of Robert's opinion where, granted, he borrowed it from somebody else, so it's not really his. Uh, that I... That I partially it. agree with. I'm not going to own agreeing with Roberts generally. No, um, Roberts owns his opinion. It's his. Yeah, I know, but I'm saying he stole some of it from sure, other people. So, okay. Um, if it is only a defense, does that mean that any time um, Obama traveled through a red state, he might theoretically be arrested? No. At when Why not? He, because when it, he's a, when he did, he's a, sitting president? a defense means he committed the when, crime, when, but he has a defense president? for it. When he's a sitting president? No, no, now. 
I'm saying right today. Oh, then yes, he's like any other citizen. He's not above. The, okay. And he, he could could indict him for something. But of course, as Stephen explained to you, that's true of every citizen and every yes. prominent person other than the president. Nancy, that's true of Nancy Pelosi. Why doesn't it happen to Pelosi? See, I don't. I. I wait, don't you agree that that happens to Pelosi? I mean, Pelosi's also. Well, and also, wait, wait. This is this is defeated in two questions. For, the, for her wait. official acts, I don't know if. Well, no, she wait, has wait, 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 even, even, wait. For this is this passing is, a law. This is defeated. I think in two in two right. questions. Do you agree okay. that for a prosecutor to arrest somebody, that they should have a belief that they'll win in criminal court? Uh that they'll conv convict beyond a reasonable doubt. They should have that belief. They, they should. They should probably. Okay, so then um, number one, then if he is arrested, it's not going to be for something silly that we know it was within his job to do, right? Wait, but I also agree that a president shouldn't be impeached unless there's no, no way that has nothing to do with anything. Hold on, okay, I'm just saying I'm for just the arrest that just because, because I think something should be doesn't mean it's the way it really is. That's and, fine. Okay, so there are okay. two ways to answer that question. So Obama, that's that. fine. Obama's traveling through states. You can believe one of two things: either one, uh, yep. a DA is not going to arrest him unless they think they can reasonably convict. So they're not just going to arrest him for random shit. Or two, you would say that as Robert seems to believe, the system is so corrupt, and the states or even federal prosecutors are so corrupt that they might arrest the president just because they want to do a political charge. But in that case, they would just arrest him for fucking anything. They would just make some shit up, right? If they're that corrupt that they'll arrest somebody without probable cause and not even thinking they could convict, but they're going to make, so they're going to trump up some bullshit charges. Private, private stuff. Yeah, they could just, I, they could literally think, just say, like, we think okay. Obama, like, we, when he was in office, he raped a girl. He raped Monica Lewinsky, too. Boom. And then arrest him yeah. and make it up. And now, but but you can't live in both worlds. I, You're like, well, they wouldn't go that far. Well, hold on. You're saying they would arrest the oh, ex-president? No, they definitely no would. Wait, I'm not. Okay. Uh, sure. I already responded to this before. You might not remember. I believe that it is much more politically effective for them to. Yeah, you gave that like, answer, but say, that answer is wholly unsatisfying. You're saying that, well, it wouldn't be as effective if they arrested him for some irrelevant shit. But what do, what do the Trumples okay, accuse well, them right now of doing in New York? They're saying, oh, wow, you're arresting him for stuff that's not even relevant, that doesn't matter. Like, oh, these were just about campaign finance things. This is about your uh, FEC donations and how you paid uh, or, or whatever. Like, they're saying it right now. So, and, but they're still saying it's political okay. Trump Trump charges. So I don't think that argument is very convincing. I, well, I wasn't thinking of Trump at all. I was thinking of being in Vermont back when we were discussing whether President Obama could be prosecuted because, remember, we had Bernie Sanders. We <laughs> we were crazy liberals, and we wanted to punish him for committing murder. Against who? Like, Against uh, the drone strike, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a, a, first of all, and it's I don't think whether... that, that, that some shitty little state should get to do, I don't think it's a good idea for so some shitty little state to be able this, to do that but, but he just he just told you Stephen just told you that any of these states could prosecute any of these former people for things well I know that that is I, I this would all I'm apply. disagreeing I don't think that's a good idea yeah, this would also apply to uh, you agree that there's no immunity for the secretary of defense for the attorney general uh for... Well, I I would disagree, but you disagree. It, you it all everyone, depends on... everyone in the executive branch has criminal. They should. Uh, they absolutely should. Wait. Pisco, that should be future arguments too. Yeah. Because if you're going to grant it for the president, why wouldn't this literally float onto everybody? Course. Which is even more unhinged. Crazy. That's even more that's crazy. Never been, and that's wait, never been the case. Wait. People... Okay. I will. I I will agree. If there, if we rolled back and instead we just read all of the government officials out of every general purpose law. That would solve my problem as well. No, it wouldn't, because what you're yes, saying is you wouldn't, absolutely you wouldn't would. want you would you you wouldn't want to live in. That's just a congressional like um, presumption about what statutes should be read. But you're actually saying you want a world in which every single member of the executive branch, at least the principal officers, is absolutely criminal immune for anything that's related to their core duties. No, not related to the <laughs> that was anything that comes out of their core duties. Well, no, they're they are core duties. Period. The stuff that comes out of would be the the miasma. The rest of the uh, no, no. I mean, the, let's, let's their let's official see. acts are so not. If just the attorney their core general duties. of the United States went and ordered his FBI to kill your grandma because the grandma was like in some dispute with your, um, with your neighbor. Or, or, or her neighbor, and, and and he liked the neighbor or something. And the attorney general writes some fake memo that says, yeah, this grandma is a terrorist. She's a threat. Do not attempt to apprehend. She has a bomb. She's going to kill everybody. Go now. You think that, that it's a good world in which not the president, but even his subordinate, the attorney general, is criminally immune for that murder. 
That's a good I one. I don't know if it's good. I think it's better than a world. Want it? It's better than the world we've been <laughs> no. living in for 200 and whatever years? I think we've had, how many police officers have been, like, we've, I'm saying that as long as they can't be arrested for general purpose laws, if you want to call that immunity or if you want to read it like they did back in the uh, 100 years ago where no general purpose law applied to government officials, either way does the same thing in my mind. Cops go to jail for general purpose laws. Force. But we're talking and about battery. We're talking about properly performing their job, which is no, a crime. No, 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 no. So <laughs> that's is a, what I'm talking about. Maybe no, 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 no. That's sorry, what sorry. I'm talking about. And, and this is, and, and I don't, I don't know if we'll be able to get much further than this if you can't recognize it. Like, we're not talking. The, the, the scope of the immunity is not governed by what is proper or what is legal. That's not what's governing the scope of immunity. Can't you get that through your head? Jesus. Wait, we are talking about legal, as in. As you said before, the duties authorized by the law or no. <laughs> put forth by the law. Yeah, that is how you defended police officers. You said they're given these duties in the law. The yeah, president is given subject... duties in the law. No, no, well, but we, we can check that... the police officers performing yes. his duties we in accordance the with the law. Have... Wait, uh, now we have to redo it. Do you agree okay. police do not have criminal immunity for battery? Yes. For batteries and that? You agree that they do not, right? Yes. Okay. You agree that no one else has that you can point to right now has criminal immunity for their official duties other than the president as has been established now. Yes, under your okay. the way you're defining immunity, yes. Where how I'm <laughs> defining immunity is not subject to the criminal law for certain conduct as opposed to Well, wait, we've already agreed defense. they're not subject to the criminal law for certain conduct. I cited you a case. If if the law literally carves out the, the, the people, that is not an immunity. That's saying that no, this the is law the law doesn't, doesn't, doesn't it. carve out. If it's a general purpose law. Oh, my God. If you're reading the law implicitly to have a carve out, then what the law okay. says. <laughs> well, the, I'm saying the implicit carve out sounds functionally the same to me as immunity. You recognize it's different, right? I, I know it technically is different. I'm saying no, it's for the purposes different. of solving the problem I see. It, it, it's very it's, different in that, one, the implicit carve-outs, that might be a matter of any specific law, right? Maybe there's a ton of textual support in one case that they intended to carve out police, and maybe there's not in another case. And so just because there was in this one case an implicit carve-out doesn't mean that for every law there's going to be an implicit carve-out. And then number two well, is that... Well, this was every law it said, but... Okay. <laughs> this applied to every law? Yes. That, that's, that's your reading of Nardone, that it applies to every no, single law? No, I'm saying Nardone wasn't the first case. Nardone got its opinion from citing another case. Yeah, so is, your, is it your okay, position? Okay, so I'm citing that other case that Nardone okay, cited. Yeah, yeah. Are, is it your position <laughs> that federal law enforcement in this country are generally immune from all criminal laws in the performance of their duties? No, not the way that... Okay, not so what are we talking about? So, so then it, it's not the case that this implicit carve-out is going to apply to every single person all the time for every general law in the executive branch. Wait, you just said it wasn't immunity. I, which are we talking about? Are we we're, talking we're, about the carve-out or are we about talking about, about, about immunity? That the carve-out will not apply to every single person all the time. I'm saying to in the executive reading branch. this, it should be. Really? Yeah. So you think that a cop, it, it should be the case that FBI agents who use their gun in the performance of their duties to kill another human being, that the murder law not apply to them? We disagree what performing the duties are. He, I remember he never agreed on the murder thing for some reason. Yeah. Well, because there's no place in the handbook that says you must shoot people. It well, you can't. You can shoot. You, to. That Florida statute literally, I think, expressly well, of says. Of course, you're yeah. allowed to. I'm allowed to shoot people if they attack me. That has yeah. nothing to do with them being a, a officer of the government. We, that's my whole oh problem my with God. the murder. It has nothing to do with them being an officer of the government. Hold they on. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. That's dead wrong. If I see okay. somebody commit a crime and I tell that person, hold on, stop, I think you've just committed a I can't shoot that person. Neither can a cop. Yes, they can. No. For, for a fleeing felon, no. that might be no. a danger. No. no. Hold on, wait, just so I'm understanding this, to be clear. You don't think that a police officer is authorized to shoot at a felon who's fleeing a scene who might be a danger to other people? In a way that normal citizens might, might be? Not be. A, I don't think not might be. 
That's a okay. So every single video we've ever watched where, where, where police officers that, are shooting at like a car where there's a violent felon inside, all of those people are illegal. And for some reason, none of those cops in any of the no, or well, no, we're, you, you're you're changing the uh, hypo. Somebody that might be a danger. That's not enough. Somebody that Whatever is a danger obviously is, you know, is enough. No, so I think we're we're confusing. Cop things thinks here. he's a danger. That's what Stevens referencing. Okay, but he didn't say that. What, so, what, what, oh my the, god! The, it, I believe for we can go and find the statutes, but I think if a person is yeah. committed of a felony, like a violent felony, in like there's like a class. I don't remember what the abbreviation is, but it's like fucking like robbery, arson, uh, assault, what, murder, whatever the fuck. If somebody's committed a violent crime as a felon and they're fleeing a scene, I'm pretty sure the cop is allowed to do whatever he needs to bring that person like down, even if if they I, can't catch him. I'm pretty sure they can shoot and kill. I have never heard that. You never heard that cops can shoot at fleeing. Suspects who are who they believe are serious, who reasonably believe that they're serious risks to. Wait, we he didn't say reasonably injury. believed are serious risks to the life of blah blah. That's that what the that's what it means. Him. Like having committed a violent crime, and I think they might have to have a weapon as well. But yeah, okay. Well, we keep adding stuff. Like I said, if if they are a threat, then yes. Oh my god! But Wait, you, uh, do cops have any more deadly self d d deadly force rights than than regular people? Um, it seems his answer is no. That's what he was saying before. He thinks that a cop can only use force in a case where an ordinary citizen can use force. Deadly force. Yeah, that's, it's a tough question because it's every a state tough is different. Question? Yeah. You think that it's, it's? Do you think it's plausible that it is the case? That the problem. Is, the problem is police don't have a duty to retreat. That would mean they have the ability Wait. to, and they have. They have different. Oh. Sorry, they have the authority to enact violence against you. Initiate violence against you. So then you agree that which, cops have more rights to use but that doesn't, uh, violent force than, than normal, normal citizens. They have more rights to use force. I'm saying deadly as far force. as kill. Deadly force, yes or no? Um, deadly force. You're not they sure. have more opportunity to use deadly force. You're not sure if they have a greater, expansive, more right to use deadly force? I don't. I, it it sure would depend sure? on the state. Are you sure? Uh, In general. Say probably... Well, I can't be sure of something that I'm saying it depends. I don't know what that means. It, do you think that there's any jurisdiction in which they have equal rights of, uh, of deadly, deadly force? As far as, yes, I would say so. Okay. I mean, I, there, I, are, I, there are things that change it because cops do not have a duty to do retreat. Okay, here's a question. Wait, wait. I'm so, I start, wait, 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 question. I start, wait, 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 hold on. But, okay, okay, simple scenario, okay? I start screaming yeah. in my apartment, okay? I scream a little bit. All right. Let's say that my neighbor hears this. My neighbor gets a few friends. OK, they bust down the door to my apartment and they start screaming. Come out. Where are you? Come out here with your hands up or whatever. I'm like, get the fuck out of my apartment. What do you do? And eventually through this, they like shoot and kill me. OK, because I come out. And I'm like, get the fuck out or whatever. I don't think they shoot and kill me in a circumstance where a police officer might be protected because he's doing his job as a police officer. Maybe he gets a 911 call or whatever, or he hears something. He goes to investigate. You're saying that an ordinary citizen can perform all of the functions of a police officer. No, nope. nope. oh, wait, <laughs> that's what I keep saying. The difference is the police officer is allowed to escalate. That you as escalate a up citizen, to deadly to no, deadly to deadly force. I'm saying the actual deadly force itself is well. It's all obviously an escalation whenever it occurs. I'm saying that all the steps that lead up to the cop needing to use the deadly force, right. a regular citizen generally is exactly. not going saying. to have. But that has nothing to do with the use of deadly force. It's that one yes, instant. So the can the deadly force, the is, is deadly force ever part of a cop's official duties? No, no, I, I've no? said I disagree with that. You don't think that the use of deadly force is ever a part of a cop's official duties? No. Then why would they have immunity for that? I, I don't think they would. I, I'm sorry, when did... <laughs> I'm but you, you're saying that the president does have immunity for assassination. Because the president is literally his job to kill people. It's in the Constitution. Well, that's what war is. Kill anybody? So. He's also limited. The, the Fourth Amendment prevents seizures that include uh, the use of deadly force against citizens. Okay, I'm only just reading the top line of this, okay? But, okay, okay. Tennessee versus Garner, I linked you both, okay? Under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, a police officer may use deadly force to prevent the escape of a fleeing suspect only if the officer has a good faith belief that the suspect poses a significant threat of death or serious physical injury to the officer or yep. others. Um, and this was a state police officer shot and killed Garner as he was fleeing the scene of a crime. Despite knowing that Garner was unarmed, the police officer believed that he was justified in shooting him to prevent his escape. Do you think that an ordinary citizen could act like this and, and be just as protected? 
if he, w well, assuming that the person was actually a significant threat of death and serious physical injury to others, then yes. I believe that meets the standard. Okay, what is the point of even having cops? What's the one thing that separates them again? The, they enforce the law. Well, but it, but it sounds like what you're saying is any ordinary person could essentially do everything a cop can do, except no. cops can escalate no. or what? No, because an ordinary person cannot effectuate an arrest. That would be a battery. Okay, and why can a cop do a battery but not an arrest? But or why can a cop do a battery but not shoot somebody and kill somebody for whatever a special reason? What's the special thing that allows cops to arrest people? Because that's uh, actually their their core duty. Is and so shooting people like this. The fact Wait, no. I guarantee what? you will not find a handbook that says your core duty as a police officer is to shoot people. Under it will say yes. you you. To, that you must effectuate an arrest, blah, blah, blah. It, that will using be a core deadly duty. Force, using deadly force, all these places have deadly force policies. The fact that- Yes, that, they that have a policy. Like, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't make it a core duty. It makes it an official I'm duty. Sure there are, I'm sure there are policies regarding the washrooms in the White House. It's not a court, that policy doesn't, yeah. So the fact that the Fourth Amendment applies to cops in these shooting situations at all means and uh, uh, again the fourth amendment only applies to government action agreed yeah obviously that therefore the use of a firearm by a police officer in this situation is an official duty it, well How could it not no, if the fourth amendment applies to <laughs> okay i guess if you're using robert's definition of everything under the sun is an official wait duty. a second wait a second no if you agree the fourth amendment only applies to government action fair uh it only applies to government actors. It only applies to government action. actors. No, I disagree with that. How how would the Fourth Amendment apply in non-government actor situation, action situation? Uh, simple. Um, let's see. Uh, think of it a. It doesn't good... do. This is this is all bullshit. Wait. So no, fourth, it's okay. It's all bullshit. Yeah, this is, wait. This is, this is, this is wait. Are you saying a core duty of the police is to beat up black people? No. Okay, so they are acting outside their duties when they beat up black people. The Fourth no. Amendment still applies. No, 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 no. That, that, that isn't a no, government this, act. This, it's a government actor is acting so outside the scope of his duty. Faith, and you know exactly. No I'm, I'm, I'm about to eviscerate you. You're not going to let me do it. Okay. And you know, no, you know, I, you know I, I'm about to. Eviscerate me. Go, okay. Dude, please. It, it absolutely <laughs> is. A, when you say, is it a core duty to... Beat up black people. You know what you're doing, and you know that the answer is. I'm pointing no out that it isn't a core government action. It's no, not. When when you are when you're talking about, uh, you know, a statute or a policy that's seeming to give a race based preference or impliedly giving one, which is what you're saying when you say yeah. that, uh, then you you would argue right that like that action as defined that way automatically like violates the equal protection clause. Fair. But that's not what the because the, yeah the because action it's a government action agent we're analyzing. The action. the action we're analyzing isn't the power to beat up black people. It's the power the power to beat up people in pursuing in in pursuance of your law enforcement duties. That's the power. But you're well, framing the a, power. Yeah. It would be like me framing the power at issue in the Donald Trump case as being the power to uh, send illegal letters or, or false, fake letters to people. Um, get, telling them that election fraud exists when it doesn't. They didn't frame it that way. Yeah, if you frame it that way, it's going to seem obviously that it's not official, but that's not how the court is analyzing it. So no, I mean, it is absolutely a core official duty of the, of the cops to use force at times. Fair? Uh, yes. Obviously. Okay. And, and, and to kill, sometimes killing by cops. I, is I disagree on the killing. I don't know. So we're going to, so, so I'm, we're not going to get past that. So the fourth <laughs> amendment applies to certain killings by cops. Agreed? Uh, it, yeah. By any government agent. Yes. Do, do you think that the, that the fourth amendment would apply to a cop who's off duty and he shoots his best friend for no reason? Well, no, then he's not a government agent. No, he, <laughs> it applies to government action, doesn't it? The Fourth Amendment? What if he was on duty not, and just shot his wait, best friend for I, no reason, for okay, not a law enforcement wait, reason? I think this might just be a silly semantic argument. The government can't do an action. Only an individual can, which means a government agent. It's Okay? A, oh Is that God. fair or not? Because no, the government fair. isn't a thing. It can't do anything. Only when a government a, agent can When act. a cop shoots a person in, in flight 
for that law enforcement purpose, it is an official act, isn't it? Oh. How is it not? Because the, the person is acting to prevent death or, what is it, death or serious physical injury to others. In pursuance of his official duties. It seems like anyone could do that, though, is my point. It doesn't seem like an official duty. It seems like a normal, yeah. But anyone can also hit people under certain circumstances. Not without getting, uh, not without being subject to the law. Same thing with the cop. They're one to one. Well, no, we we just agreed that the wait, cop gets to arrest wait. people. The death <laughs> wait, you don't think that you can make a citizen's arrest at times in most states? Um, yeah, I'm sure okay. you can. So, so it's one. To, it's literally one to one. Citizens hmm. can wait. Anything... Wait, if that's true, and the only reason the officer can't be charged is that justification statute you cited, how can that work for a citizen's arrest? So. Is that yeah, because give? because the truth is, even though I don't know why you're not granted it, is it's obvious that cops have a greater scope of authority to use force than normal citizens, and so they have having a greater scope of authority allows them to like initiate conflicts, has like increases their um, like the burdens that they might have to show, right? Or sorry, decreases. I, the burdens I agree. They, they have, have a greater. Yeah, um, so, so everything you're saying, the truth is like violence. I never disagreed with it though. Okay, that includes sometimes killing, doesn't it? I'm saying I don't see any difference in the authority of officer. Does it include has to killing kill. sometimes, yes or no? Does what? Sorry, I'm trying to clarify the use and you of just official, said the same the, thing. The twice. use of official because you're rambling. The use of official force. Does that include sometimes deadly force? Wait, I've haven't I answered this like three or four or five times? I'm trying to to get you to understand the obvious answer, which is, of course... Well, I'm trying to get you to understand the obvious reason why I'm not. <laughs> okay, so when the president orders an assassination, which you said is official, fair? Yes. And he orders an FBI agent to go and assassinate someone. When the yep. FBI assassinates on his order, is that official? Yes. Why? Uh, because it is the official act of... of what do you mean, why? <laughs> why is that official? Why is the killing by order of the president official but not the cop killing a, a suspect fleeing because the president is literally given the authority to kill it is one of his duties cops are given the authority to kill wait i that's why i said if you cite something that says your duty is to kill cite something that says the president's duty is to kill that's not in the constitution anywhere okay war i would call war okay law enforcement killing. i law enforcement equals killing war equals killing you don't have to kill anybody to war. do a war you know that right Wait. Okay, maybe this is too modern for me. Every war I've ever heard of involved killing. Um, maybe now they can do something. And cyber every war law and enforcement no body I've heard of involves killing, right? I'm saying the word itself. There, no, the I'm, war, no, war is just two countries that are in some sort of like military conflict with one another. It doesn't necessarily, you don't have to kill X number of people well, for it to be considered a war or not. Also implies. No, it doesn't. But, Absolutely okay. not. There's a whole host of things militarily that we can imagine. Um, Bombing facilities, bombing structures. It doesn't necessarily require killing. And, you know, it implies killing okay. just as much as law enforcement implies killing sometimes. Cops okay. kill. I, I disagree on that point, but I don't think there's a, a good uh, solution unless we want to go back to, like, founding documents and what they understood war as. But I'm guessing ah. it included killing. Um, so official, in the definition of war itself, I don't understand. <laughs> this is the kind of thing that I get from people who don't bite the assassination bullet. Like usually I'll get people saying killing is never official because of some arbitrary reason like what you're doing now. But you've already said that killing is official when the president does it, just not when cops do it. And yeah, I guess the I basis of that I is engaging in war versus not. What if there's no the war? Because the president has a special power that is bestowed on him that other people don't have. What? Or other agencies, I should say, because the ag executive, the way it works. But Wait, what, what special thing is, is on him that nobody else has? Nobody else has the authority to commit murder. Wait, why wouldn't the executive of the presidency have the same powers bestowed upon him as the executive in any of the 50 states? I don't believe... can the... I don't know enough about that to know if the states have the power to levy war. Well, okay, um, not levy war, war, but just in any, uh, in any well, executive... that's what I'm talking about. The authority assassination is not... Murder. Hang on a second. Is assassination levying war? 
by the by the government. Oh, that's <laughs> um, probably not. Uh, at least not under not. the modern. Well, we don't definition. have to. You know that a DA, You know that a prosecutor can basically enact like like no knock warrants, which is kind of like like a, an invasion, literally, with people with guns ready to kill if there's like resistance that they meet. Right? Like you're basically ordering yeah, and, like an armed kidnapping. I would agree right? that like, that is a core function. But not the cop who's following the orders, or who someone like becomes a threat and they and they Wait, kill in their official. Is, can deployment. can we just step back for a second because I'm not sure what this matters, but I if I don't remember why this is important. This is important because you're <laughs> or if trying... we're just arguing to argue, which is fine. I just want to know. You are you are arguing that everyone in the executive branch should have the authority, the same kind of immunity as the president. That's what you said, didn't you? Yes, or. Or, like I said, uh, like a hundred years ago, just read them out of every general purpose law. Either way. But, but hang on. You're saying that that's the world in which you prefer. Agreed? Regardless of no, how you get there. No, it's the only way I see uh, it functionally working. If it's the you only way you see it functionally function working, then you prefer that world. That's what that means. You prefer it. You don't yeah. want a dysfunctional government, no, I imagine. I, I'm an anarchist. I prefer that all the governments <sighs> die. You're an anarchist? I don't care. Wait, are you an Philosophically, I, you know. <laughs> oh, I think Pisco disconnected. Oh, well. Yeah. Okay, well, we got to fight with Pisco. I, I could have convinced him that he's an anarchist too, but. <laughs> All right, well, any other final yeah. thoughts, feelings? Uh. uh no, not that I not that I can think of. Um, I enjoyed the conversation. Uh, it was fun. Um, I hope I hope there's at least some idea that they're not all crazy. Like some of them, some of the justices might be partisan, but they're not all uh, bad faith actors. I hope. Okay. That's all. I all I was trying to uh, to move you on. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. All right. Well. All right. Like Thanks it. for Thanks the conversation. For yeah, bye-bye. Be careful. Yep, bye. Hmm, 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 hmm.